everyone. I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. This is Shell Point Today for the weekend of January 30th, 31st, and February 1st. On today's show, we'll hear about presidents and their first ladies. And we'll take a look back at our best stories from earlier this week. But first, a few reminders for you. It's the big weekend of the gala, so make sure your Friday plans include attending either the 245 or the 645 seating at the Village Church. The featured entertainment is Ethan Bortnick, a 14-year-old piano prodigy, composer, and singer. Come on out and celebrate all that is possible at Shell Point. Jerry's Garage has been a fixture at Shell Point for 36 years, keeping residents' cars in tip-top shape. It's been a great run, but the time has come for Jerry to hang up his wrenches. Due to a family health situation, this was Jerry's last week at the shop. But don't worry, you will still be able to get your car serviced at Shell Point. Scotty's Automotive, whose main facility is on McGregor near the Shell Point thrift store, will be taking over the garage operations at Shell Point by mid-March. Starting in 1991, William and Sue Wills began researching, writing, and performing a series of presentations they called Presidents and Their First Ladies. They have performed a number of these at Shell Point over the years, and they will be back on Thursday, February 5th. This time, they will be portraying John and Jackie Kennedy. William and Sue shared with us a bit about what they do. I got involved in college and Sue had just always been sort of interested and she joined a local community theater in Baltimore. And after I graduated college, I ended up in that same community theater group. And then in 1970, on May the 15th, I asked her on a date, and on May the 30th, I proposed to her. I went to the hotel business and did very well in a couple of years. I was the general manager of a 250 room Sheridan Hotel in Ocean City. And we had our third child, and then we walked away from all of it. I came home one day and I said to Sue, we're going to start a children's theater, Sue. And I'm going to leave my you job. You asked me. I asked. What would you think about starting right. a children's theater? I did, and I said, I'll write the scripts and you write the music, and you do the costuming, and I'll build the sets, and you make the sets. The only thing is, we had never done any of that before. We risked every penny we had, and in three months lost it all. Ironically, this lady who we met through our children's theater, we run into her one day later on. She's the head of our local elder hostel. She said, well, do you have any other ideas of what we could do? And I, Sue gave me, for Christmas, a set of books on the presidents and the first ladies. Because I wanted to read them. <laughs> <laughs> but I got my hands on it, and I found out every story was extremely interesting. So I suggested, and Sue, said yes, that we teach a course together trying to show the personal side of these names in history. I would do the hairdos and we would use the accents and we maybe would add a hat or a cigar or kind of mm. little props like that. I suppose you invited um, the Fords over for dinner and when it was over you said to them, Jerry Bate, would you stand up and just tell us your life story? So they might at some point in time be talking directly to you at another point in time, they might recreate a scene with themselves. And so over the next five years, we came up with five versions. And that's how basically we started to assemble these shows. And then when we closed our theater operation, we turned it into a tour. And we've been in 35 states doing our shows now. We purposely chose not FDR, not Truman, people that maybe they had heard of, but they didn't know too much about. Calvin Coolidge. Coolidge. Probably have the most humor. Abe Lincoln tells some good stories in there. William Henry Harrison was only president what, for a month. People th tend to really forget about him. But they had, mm, what? I think it was 14. 14 children. And Franklin and Mrs. Pierce, that's, a, that's probably one of the saddest. They had lost two children already. And they had another son, beautiful little boy. She didn't want Franklin to be president. And a month before the presidency, they're in a train wreck. There's one fatality, the little boy. The year old boy. And, and then she finds out. She comes to the conclusion, well, he must have wanted you to give your whole attention to this job of president. That's why Benny was taken. So those are just, I mean, some of the more obscure, but really moving stories that you come upon. He does all the research and the writing. And I will read, I will read some of their biographies just to get a feel 
of how they acted, how they, you can kind of get how they spoke from letters and people would describe their voices if you don't have voice clips of them. So you kind of work on that. But. Some of the information on some of the early ones are, are hard to get unless they left behind letters and things that people kept, like Mrs. Adams or John Quincy Adams' wife, Louisa, Martha. Although Martha Washington burned just about every bit of correspondence she had with George, she, was, she wrote letters constantly to relatives, and a lot of those relatives kept that information. It's bringing back memories, or the ones that they don't know much about. It's just that you made them into more people than just a, a name you know, in, in, in a book. Eventually, uh, I mean, at its height, we would sometimes do 70 shows just here in Florida. And at the height, we would do 300 to 325 shows a year throughout the country. The ones that maybe mean the most to us are when you get to do a president at their presidential site. We'd perform both Adams at the Adams Homestead up in Quincy, mm -hmm. Massachusetts. So that was great, right out in the barn and right out on the lawn. And had our pictures taken in their parlor. So in our costumes, it was like we really lived yeah. there. And we did the Trumans, Trumans at the Truman Library and the Hoover at the Hoover Library Museums. It just kind of made it feel a little bit, you know, special. www.presladies.com. If you click on them, it takes you to another page. You can read about all 33 couples we do and see three to five minute clips of every show that we have. This is really the simplest form of theater that you can get. I mean, two people standing behind two lecterns. And yet even the presidents, who they don't know very much about, can be very moving experiences for people. In a lot of ways, because there's always something in the story that's going to be the same as somebody's life out there. You know, it might be that, in this case, that, that they lost a child that comes into this play, or that they had a father who sort of disowned them. And it was all Alcoholic kind of little alcohol, alcohol, you know, problems that come in, or successes. Uh, so even though they might not know the history of that particular person, when they hear their story, they can either relate to them personally or somebody that they knew and say, you know, that guy was just like Harding. You know, that was really Coming up, we're going to replay some of our best stories from this week on Shell Point Today. But before we do that, let's cover all of this weekend's happenings, menus, and church news. Hi, Shell Point. I'm Caitlin Van Scoy, and I'm here with Bev Chanley, and this is the weekend edition of Shell Point TV Happening Segment. I'm going to tell you about our Friday activities. 8 a.m., we start off with men's match play doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. At 8.15, volunteers are welcome to head down to the stamp room for stamp ministry. From 8.30 to 11.30 today, the Friday Marketplace will be here in the administration courtyard. At 9 a.m., we have Canasta and Samba at the common second floor lobby of the Woodlands. At 10 a.m., we have men's match play doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. And at 10.15, Inquiring Minds in the Manatee Room. We move to the afternoon, and 12.30, we start off with Mixed Progressive Bridge in the Woodlands Game Room. And at 1.15, Advanced Table Tennis in the Tarpon Room. The quilters will be meeting in the Osprey Room at 1.15. And from 1.30 to 3.30 today, the model train room will be open for complimentary tours. 2 p.m. is Big Euchre time at Sable Room of the Woodlands. And at 2.15, come out for water volleyball at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. 2.30, we have Latin Size in the Health Club. 2.45 is the first seating for the gala 2015 possible. That's the theme, and it's in the Village Church, and you do need to RSVP for that. Also, 245, Great Decisions will be meeting in the Manatee Room. And Pickleball is being played at 4 o'clock at the Pickleball Courts. And 645 is Game Night at the Resident Activity Center. And 645 is the second seating for the Gala 2015 possible theme in the Village Church, and you do need to RSVP for that. Here's Bev for our Saturday activities. Thank you, Caitlin. Saturday starts off at 8 o'clock with pickleball at the pickleball court. Also at 8 o'clock, we have the round robin doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. At 9.30, more tennis. We have men's and women's doubles down at the tennis courts. 
At 9.45, we have Duplicate Bridge being played in the Manatee Room on the island. And the Model Yacht Sailing Club will be at the Garden Apartment Pond at 10.15. At 1 o'clock, we have Chess. That's played in the Library Lounge at the Resident Activity Center. And then at 1.15, we have Scrabble. That's in the Library Lounge as well. Table Tennis will be played in the Tarpon Room at 1.15. And you can play all weekend unless otherwise noted. At 3.15, we have basic line dancing. That's in the health club on the island. 6.30, we have duplicate bridge in the manatee room. And that's our last activity for Saturday. Here's Caitlin for your Sunday activities. Thanks, Bev. We start Sunday off with 9 a.m. Christian Life Studies. It's offered in the Woodlands Game Room and also at the Village Church. 10.15 is a time for morning worship in the Village Church. And if you can't make it out to the church, it's also broadcasted live on Shell Point TV, channel 13. At 4.15, we have ballroom line dancing for beginners in the health club. And then we finish off with 6.15 evening service in the Village Church. Well, thank you for joining us for our weekend segment. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. I am Terry Kolath with your Academy Information for the Weekend. On Friday at 10.15, we have the 1950s in the Social Center on the island, and you can sign up right at the door. At 10.15, iPad or iPhone walk-in clinic takes place in the Teaching Center on the island, and they welcome everyone with an iPad or iPhone question. At 1.15, follow your friends and family on Facebook will take place in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. And next week on Monday, we offer Skype with Joe Kramer of Lakewood, iPhone's Contacts app with Bruce Findlay of Sundial, Better Communications with Email with Russ Cray of Oakmont, The Story of New England Whaling Session 2 with Seth Mandel of Teledora. On Tuesday, we have Writing Memoirs on the Computer with two Lakewood ladies, Lucille Peterson and Marty Gibson. The history of the Middle East begins with Professor Adrian Kerr, and Bruce Finley of Sundial will teach iPad apps. On Wednesday, we have Travel the World Virtually with Larry Brock of Eagles Preserve, and Susan Willoughby begins Session 2 of Intermediate Bridge Classes. And no, you do not need any other sessions to begin this class for Intermediate Bridge players. We also have You've Got Windows 8 with Floyd Jamison, and Vintage Classics with Dr. Harriet Furton Reese of Genonia. On Thursday, protect personal information on your computer with Jim Plummer of Parkwood, an iPad e-reader class with Penny Modridge of Nautilus, and Education in America with Dr. Gary Chesley. On Friday, Gerald Zeidenberg will present Margaret Thatcher. Menus for Friday, January 30th. In the Crystal Room, the platter is a mixed seafood pasta with garlic toast and roasted carrots. The dinner is seafood buffet for $15.95. The soup is New England clam chowder. On Friday in the Island Cafe, for lunch we have grilled meatloaf sandwich on rye with fries for $7.25. And at dinner, it's chef's choice for $8.25. And in the Palm Grill on Friday, we have lamb chops for $22.95 or fried oysters for $16.95. On Saturday, the Crystal Room is closed. The Allen Cafe for Saturday, January 31st at lunchtime has an Italian sausage with peppers and onions on a sub roll for $7.25. And for dinner, it's sautéed beef liver with sautéed onions and mashed potatoes for $8.25. Saturday at the Palm Grill, as usual, is prime rib for $19.95. On Sunday, February 1st, the Crystal Room has its Sunday brunch for $17.50. The Allen Cafe has for lunch a hamburger patty with fresh fruit, cottage cheese, and sliced tomato for $7.25. For dinner Saturday in the Allen Cafe, it's chef's choice for $8.25. And the Palm Grill is closed on Sundays. All menus are available 24 hours a day at shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church, and welcome to Village Church Connections. And I'm here to talk about our weekend services. And as usual, we certainly have a lot that is planned for the Lord's Day this Sunday. 
Uh, obviously, we start out with the Christian Life Studies, which take place at 9 o'clock in the hospitality room, and so we'd invite you to come as we continue to follow up from our Global Impact Week theme of the Joy of Access, which has been a wonderful way of spanning the globe with our international perspectives. And then the Sunday morning service, I'll be preaching out of our series in Hebrews called The Superior Christ, a message entitled A Covenant Written in Blood. And it's Communion Sunday, and so we're going to weave uh, that message into the communion activity so that we'll recognize what the blood of Jesus accomplished for us in a wonderful way. So I think that's going to be an exciting part and dimension of our worship service. The choir will be singing, and we'll have a wonderful opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord. And then on Sunday night at 6.15, we invite you to come back because I'm going to begin a new Sunday evening series, which will uh, pop up from time to time as uh, we uh, alternate it with other special events that we have this time of the year on Sunday evenings. And it's a, it's a series entitled, Who is God? Uh, this, is a, this is a study that really has to do with the nature and character of God. I think if there's one thing that uh, needs to come from a pulpit like the Village Church pulpit, it's a clear recognition of the person of God himself. This is theology proper. This is trying to understand uh, the nature and character of the God we worship. And I think it's uh, amazing to me how I run into people who misunderstand who God is or diminish his capacities. But on Sunday evenings, we're going to uh, recognize the, uh, the power, the wisdom, the grace, the goodness uh, even the wrath of God from time to time will be able to see the full dimension over a period of time, the nature and character of God. And so we hope you join us for our worship services on Sunday morning, uh, the Superior Christ, a covenant written in blood. Join us for the Lord's Supper Sunday evening, the beginning of the series entitled, Who is God? And we'll delight in your presence as we find the presence of the Lord so valuable to us. God bless you and we'll hope to see you soon. And now it's time to look back at stories from this week. The quilt show is coming up. We got all the information from the ladies in charge. Hello, I'm Melody Desolet, volunteer coordinator here at Shell Point. I am joined today by two very special women and we're about to talk about the biennial quilt show. It's upcoming and it's gonna be exciting. I have Elaine Neighbors here from Rosemont and I'm also joined by Pat Meredith from Sundial. Thank you ladies so much for joining me today. You're welcome. Well, first things first, Elaine, we have to have a quilt to actually have a quilt show. So we're gonna talk about the registration form, which you were so kind as to design for us. Would you please talk a little bit about the form and where our residents can pick those up? Yes, Melody, I have the form here with me and it is for the show, which is March 7th through the 9th. And all these forms will come back into me once they're filled out and they can be picked up at both registration desks at the Woodlands and the Island and they are due back to me by February 2nd and that is the the deadline because it is uh, important that we have all the information by then. The quilts can be of any size. Um, if they're large quilts they will have to have a sleeve on them and the form is self-explanatory and my phone number is on there. They can call me if they have any questions at all. Um, we are this year inviting the employees to help um, to bring in their quilts if they'd like to show them. We'd love to have them. And we're looking forward to a successful show. So Elaine, in the past we've seen everything from a placemat to a king size quilt. And the talent here is astronomical as everybody has witnessed and as we will see in this upcoming show you had said the registration form is self-explanatory um, important to note is probably the bottom portion could you explain that yes the bottom section you cut off from the blue form and you keep that in order to come and retrieve your quilt at the end of the show and the information is there of, of the time you should do that so that's important for the person to keep the rest of it comes to me, and uh, the one thing I do want to mention, if I haven't already, is that we are accepting only quilts that have not been shown before at Shell Point. Uh, new quilts or vintage quilts or heirloom quilts within the family, but they um, should not have been shown before. 
Well, that sounds like it's going to be an exciting show. So as Elaine had said, the forms can be picked up at either service desk, either at the island here or at the woodlands. And you just take a look through, you fill out your information. Now, when you send the forms into Elaine, you do not bring your quilts to her yet. What you want to do is detach that bottom portion, keep that for your records, and pay attention to the dates and times on there when you're going to bring your quilt to the social center, which is where we are having our show. So now I'm turning to Pat Meredith, who's going to get into the fun details of our quilt show. Yes. Hi, Pat. Hello there, Melanie. What fun things do you want to know? Remember, 7th through the 9th of March. Okay. So yeah. what days of the that week are those? Saturday, Sunday afternoon, and Monday. And on Saturday, it's 10 to 4. Sunday, it is 12 to 4. And Monday, it is 10 to 2. So different times on each day, so you want to pay attention to those, which you can see those in Shell Point Life and the weekly publication and, of course, on TV. Correct. Which right. we are on TV, TV right, right now. now. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pat, tell me what our viewers can expect to see in this quilt show. Well, some of us are going to be surprised, too, because we haven't seen all of them. They've been done. The challenge is the only one that they will be allowed to vote on, and they're... That will be done by then. That will directions will be there at the show. We can have everything from placemats. We can have large quilts. We can have the vintage quilts. We can have surprise quilts. Uh, you never know what's going to show up. And sometimes it's exciting. And sometimes you think, oh my goodness, maybe this is something special. Oh, I love that. I love surprises and I love special. You love special, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you had mentioned that there is a challenge that the Quilters Club gets together. They don't know what the challenge is from each other, but Correct. they work as individuals. Right. And they will see the challenge themselves the Friday before we hang it so that we don't spend all our time ooing and aahing and not doing our jobs. But, <laughs> so they will, but that will be there for them to vote on if they care to. They don't have to. It's not a mandatory type thing. So when viewers come to view the challenge, they can vote on their favorite. Is that correct? That's correct. That is correct. And we hope they do. Wonderful. Um, some challenge is always a challenge and sometimes you know, <laughs> a little harder than others. So. <laughs> well, quilting would be an extreme challenge for me. I have no idea, but I can appreciate the talent and workmanship that goes into each piece. Now, I do have a question. I heard a little birdie told me that there may be, for the first time, a few items for sale at this show. There will be two quilts for silent auction or bid. And one is a baby quilt and one is a full-size quilt. And they can put their what they would be willing to pay for it, and whoever gets the highest number on that page gets the quilt. That so. sounds like a grand idea. So no cash or checks are involved. You don't need to bring money to the show. But once the show concludes, the highest bidder of both items will have to come and retrieve their quilts. Is right. that correct? And they will be notified by telephone num number that they leave on the form, and uh, that way they will get the quilt they want. That if they put fantastic. the highest bid on, and we like bids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that sounds great. Now, in addition, um, we're probably going to have the beautiful orchids from our prize-winning orchid house. Yes, there, and we will have some musicians playing during the show, and uh, they will be volunteering their time. They often have nothing to do with doing the quilt, but they're willing to to give them their time to make it a little more special for us. Well, that's great. I think. The word of the day shall point is special. This event is going to be elegant. It's going to be fun. There's going to be new things. As Elaine had mentioned, employees are invited this year. And as Pat had mentioned, there's some items for sale. So be sure to register if you're willing to participate or come out to the show and support your friends and neighbors. The show will take place from March 7th through the 9th. Pat had mentioned all those different hours, so pay attention to the publications. We hope to see you out and about. Thank you so much for joining us today. The painters of the Shell Point Art Studio regularly hang new work on their gallery wall. The theme this time is children and pets.
Jeff Corey, newly reinstalled for his second time as executive director of the Legacy Foundation, came by to let you know that he and his team are standing by to serve you. Hi, my name is Jeff Corey, and I'm the new executive director of the Legacy Foundation here at Shell Point. Some of you may know that I first began serving at Shell Point over 20 years ago, and later helped found the Legacy Foundation in 2001. It's great to be back home. I've spent my career serving individuals and families, helping them navigate through the estate planning process to make the greatest impact for loved ones and the charities they support. I'm a certified financial planner and a chartered financial consultant, and most recently served as the Vice President of Advancement at Nyack College in New York. The Legacy Foundation is a one-stop financial concierge resource for residents who have questions regarding their financial, estate, and philanthropic plans. We provide trusted, confidential advisory services, educational programming, and work with the finest legal, tax, and professional advisors in the area, all with the goal to provide you, our residents, with financial security, individualized attention, and peace of mind. Many of you may be familiar with our Daily Money Manager program that assists residents with bill paying, insurance, taxes, and a host of financial resources when managing your finances just becomes too much of a burden. Our staff welcomes the opportunity to serve you. There's never a cost or obligation to visit with us and to learn more about our services and how we can help you. An important part of the legacy service is reviewing current estate plans including wills, trusts, powers of attorney, and advanced health care directives. If it's been some time since you took a look at these important documents, contact our office today at 466-8484 to schedule an appointment. Our office is located on the island by the Manatee Room, or we're delighted to meet you at your home. It's great to be back here at Shell Point, and I look forward to visiting with you soon at the Legacy Foundation. Best wishes for a happy and prosperous new year. Dr. Gary Chesley gave us a preview of his upcoming academy class on education in America. Hello everyone, I'm here today with a special guest, Dr. Gary Chesley. We're talking about his presentation in the Academy of Lifelong Learning, Education in America. Thank you for joining me, Gary. I'm really happy to be here. It's gonna be a fun event, I think. I think so too. Well, we couldn't have chosen a broader topic, yeah. Education in America. Yeah, there's a lot going on in the country right now. A lot of people are trying a lot of things. Some of it's good, some of it's bad. Um, I work over at FGCU a bit. We're doing a lot of interesting things over there. Um, and I think that the country, at least we're, we know we're doing some things wrong. Now we have to discover what it's the right thing to do for the most number of kids. And so that's one of the things we're going to talk about. That's fabulous. Well, we have a, an academy advisory board. Mm -hmm. um, a variety of residents I asked to spend a two-year term with me because they represent a, a yeah. diverse field of interest. And one of them, Dick Wright, has run the forum on Sanibel, and when we decided education was the topic we wanted to tackle, he said, you have to get Dr. Gary Chesley. He's right over on Sanibel right now. So tell us, who is Dr. Chesley? Well, <laughs> I'm originally from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised there, big Cardinal fan. I started as a teacher, coach, um, athletic director, uh, principal, and then I uh, went to Denver, Colorado, and I started as a public school there that had been sitting vacant as a high school for two years because of circumstances that were beyond anybody's control. It was not too far from a toxic waste dump, and so uh -huh. people didn't want to send their kids there. So we started a school there. I did that for a number of years, and then I went to Connecticut and was a principal for a very short period of time and ended my career after 14 years as superintendent of schools. So I've done that. I've, I'm working, uh, I have worked with the uh, Connecticut Department of Education. They have 12 universities in Connecticut that prepare teachers, and so I've done that, trying to change the nature of teacher education uh, so that we prepare better teachers. 50% of our young teachers quit in the first couple of years. 50%. We need to stop that. So we need to better prepare them, and so that's my interest, and that brings me to FGCU right now. So I'm having fun doing all this. So an athletic director, that brings to mind motivation. Yeah. Motivation must have been kind of a key point that has taken you so far in the realm. Yeah, you know, I, my father was a motivating character to me, and uh -huh. when I was a young man in St. Louis, I, we moved there, and, and it shows you how things are supposed to happen. I got a job at a hardware store, believe it or not, and the gentleman who owned that place said to me, um, I hear you're interested in college, and, and, and I was, and that you want to be a teacher. And I said, yeah, I do. And he said, okay, I'll make you a deal. 
uh, my pay at that time was uh, $2.25. That was the minimum wage at the time. He said, if you go to college and enroll in an education program and stay in there, I'll pay you $5 an hour every time you come back here for a vacation, for a long weekend, for the summer. If you change majors, you're fired. <laughs> so that's how, that was motivating. Yeah. And then I, in turn, was motivated when I became principal of that high school, some years later, I invited him to my first graduation, and he sat in the front row. <laughs> so he got to see the whole thing go full circle. That's a wonderful story. Yeah. Well, when we think about education, every single person who pays taxes invests in the education. Yeah. Everybody who invests in education invests in our future. No wonder we're all so concerned about what our, what's happening with our money. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that is interesting as I've gone through and prepared for this uh, presentation, um, I've read a lot. And, and I, it's not that I've found anything that I didn't know, but it confirmed a lot of things. There's so many things we think we know as citizens and taxpayers that aren't quite right uh -huh. about t teachers and about schools and about competition and about the, the way uh, things are structured and about the nature of, of poverty and how it affects and about all these test scores that you hear things about. So that's one of the things that I want to talk about is, you know, what do you think you know uh -huh. that's not quite right? And I, I know people will walk out of the presentation saying, you know, that guy was pretty smart. He figured this out. That's wonderful. Well, when I think about a teacher, and I am a teacher, we all have a teacher in, in yeah. mind, you yeah. know, in our memory, yeah. who was very, very special to us. And, yeah. and we, we kind of think, oh, they have it easy. They work nine months a year. They have a vacation. But when we think of what they actually do with our children, it boggles yeah. the mind, doesn't it? Well, I'll give you an example of that. Just yesterday, I spent my day over at Three Oaks Elementary School, which is out by the highway. Um, and I have seven students over there who are learning how to teach. And um, I think they started last week cock, somewhat cocky, confident. I, I've been through this. You know, I'm going to graduate in a few, uh, two months or so. I got this. And then we put them into a class of kindergartners all day. When I met with them at 2 o'clock, they realized they didn't have anything. They didn't have a clue. Um, and so we sat for an hour and a half and sort of processed with seven kids, what would you see about behaviors? You know, you got a group of, you know, 18-year-old, uh, 18 uh, 18 kids who just love life. And they want to share that life moment to moment with you as a teacher. So it, it's an exciting profession, and what we need to do is be much better at training these young people to be great teachers because you want to be that that anchor in a kid's life that, that they can point back and say, you know, Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so made me who I am today in the way I think. They got me started on the right track. Now, in our description, um, Gary, we said um, there, there's some important questions. How did schools evolve to where they are today? What do we think that's wrong? Which silver bullets didn't work? What 10 things can we do now? Your extreme example of being an education expert can probably help us by narrowing down to what's really, yeah. really important yeah. here. There, there, I'm going to lay out some things that, that I think people will buy into. You know, we're, we're largely in a very polarized society right now. But I'm going to, when we do this presentation, I'm going to throw things out and say, here's what I'm thinking. Can you agree with this? And, I, you know, it's, it's, there was a time when I, when I was at the Rose Garden and my school got this big award. And... Uh, Dan, and I'm going to tell this story uh, at the presentation, Dan Rather came up to me in the Rose Garden, and he said, uh, I understand from what I've read that you really have a national reputation and you're a great principal. And I'm thinking, okay, he's setting me up. There's, there's <laughs> something coming here. And uh, he said, so what do you want for your kids? And I thought, well, that's a pretty profound question. And so I said, um... I thought about it, and I said, I want four pretty simple things. And I, I said, okay, first of all, I want my graduates to be good kids, okay? You know, you, you know you're shaking your head. You know what a good kid means. Yeah. We, we kind of know. If we, yeah. if we say that's a good kid, we, we kind of have a definition in our mind. That's one. Uh -huh. I want our kids to be able to make good decisions uh -huh. and appreciate that they're not always easy. And kids struggle with that. Mm -hmm. I want our kids to earn an array of op opportunities for themselves. Don't close doors. Have a work ethic. 
you know? And you're, sh you're shaking your head, which yeah. parents do that. Sure. You, when you hear that, you say, yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. And then lastly, I want every kid that, when I hand them the diploma, I want them to, to feel like they owe the community something, that they gotta give back. That that's a burden that they have. I need to give back. So I used to say to my parents, so I'm handing this diploma, and the ceremony ends, and if you and I can agree that that kid of yours exhibits those four qualities, we've done a hell of a job. And that's what it's about. That's fabulous. That's what it's about. <laughs> I look so forward to this presentation. I am going to have fun with it, and I know the audience will. They will. So please make every effort on Thursday, February 5th, we only have Dr. Chesley for an hour and a half, seven to 30. <laughs> but we do have the Village Church Auditorium, so everyone is welcome. We hope to see you there. Have you ever been to a star party? Well, your chance is coming up soon. Caitlin Van Scoy and Doug Heatherly were on this week to tell you all about it. Hi, I'm Caitlin Van Scoy, and I'm here with Doug Heatherly, and we're here to talk about an exciting event coming in February. As you can see, we're standing at Shell Point Golf Club in the parking lot, and you may be wondering why. Well, we're gonna talk to you about a stargazing party coming up February 7th. Now, Doug, please tell us more about what this event will entail, who's gonna host it, and what residents can expect okay. that night. Okay, this is our third annual star party. Okay, great. And uh, we do it in conjunction with the uh, Fort Myers Astronomical Society. And it's really the star star uh, gazing uh, club of Fort Myers and Cape Coral, and they'll bring their personal telescopes out here, right. and we'll have probably a half dozen telescopes and astronomers, and they'll be set up, and there'll be different types of telescopes, Great. and so you'll get to see different types, different different objects, and that kind of thing with it, and it ought to be a good night. Uh, it's February seventh, mm -hmm. from seven to nine. Okay. Yep. And. Um, the objects that we ought to be able to see that night, we'll have some planets that are up. Jupiter, Wonderful. which is uh, the king planet, of course. Great. We have Mars, we have Venus, and we have the Great Orion Nebula in, in uh, that, uh, that, that evening. So the, the, the objects we'll be able to see are, are fun to look at, and it'll be not a really pleasant night. The only thing people need to pay attention to, though, is wear something appropriate for a cool absolutely. evening. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so, uh, We'll have some chairs. We'll have an introduction to the night sky. Uh, so uh, it'll start, I think, I think you said 7 to 9 that evening. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that's really nice about these star parties, Caitlin, is that for people that have never had an opportunity to use a telescope or never had any opportunity to come out and do any observing, this is a great opportunity. You'll get a chance to see um, multiple objects in the sky, and you'll have professionals that'll be able to explain to you what you're looking at. Great. And this is a great, great opportunity. That's wonderful. I, I really do love watching the stars, but sometimes it's nice to know what you're looking at, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it is. Now, there will be special transportation to this event to and from, and sign up is required. So if you really enjoy the stars and, and want to enjoy a, a wonderful evening, please join us from 7 to 9 on February 7th right here at the Shell Point Golf Club. And we'll see you there. Well, that wraps up another week on Shell Point today. We're glad you joined us for our show. Tune in again next week for more news and stories from around your community. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for the weekend of January 30th, 31st, and February 1st. I'm Rich Nation. And I'm Mary Kay Grimaldi. And from all of us at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you back here on Monday.